Hey guys, so in this video we're looking at reflections in sine and cos functions. So you should already be familiar with reflections in general as we've looked at them in other graphs. However, we haven't looked at them in sine and cos functions quite yet. So with reflections, a good way you can think about it and you can visualize it, it's probably the easiest to visualize because when you have let's say, a, an axis and you have a graph, you can think, well, if I'm reflecting in the x-axis, then I can just do the exact same graph, but it's been flipped. So a good way of thinking about it is that depending on which axis it is, then you have the function, then you can just flip it into the other one. So it'll be the same shape, but you just flipped it to the other side. So we begin with the sine graph, but we'll look at reflection in the x-axis. So that means we have the x-axis here. We want to think that whatever we have, we are reflecting in that x-axis. So firstly, what's happening to the equation? Well, we have y is going to be replaced with negative y when it's a reflection in the x-axis. Remember, because it's the opposite, so with the x-axis, we replace y. So this will give us the equation y is equal to negative sine x. So that means that we're going to reflect in this x-axis here. So the point of a 0, 0 will be the same. However, instead of having that curve there, we're now going to have this curve over here, and then we'll go up again, then continue along. But with this one, it's going to go along, and along, and up, and it'll continue down like that. So what we can see is if you can see that it forms so these circles, and that's because when you have this graph up here, it is then reflected down, and then when it's negative, all the negative values, the green become positive. So with reflection in the x-axis, the magnitude and the period doesn't change. So the period stays the same as you can see here. And the reason why the period stays the same is that you haven't dilated it at all. So even though you've flipped it up to get from one to the other, so to do a full cycle, it's still going to be 2 pi. Or if you've dilated and reflected, it's going to be whatever the new period is. So the period stays the same, as well as the magnitude. So this value here is going to remain the same. So here it's 1 with this equation. However, once again, if you dilate it and reflect it, then it will stay the same as k. But the reflection itself doesn't change what the magnitude is. So what happens if you have a sine graph that's been translated up? So it gets a bit more complicated when you have sine and cos that have multiple things like dilations, translations. So if we have let's say sine graph looks like that so we'll, we'll start at here then it will start at zero then it will go up, down, up, down, up so it's you can see a typical sine graph like that but let's imagine obviously it was neater and all symmetrical then what happens if you reflect in the x-axis? well you have to reflect in this line here so that means it's going to flip all the way down we're going to get this equation that comes down here and then it looks the same thing but we flipped it so we're now going to get this here and that's because we're getting more positive so that means we're now going to get more negative we're getting more negative so now we're going to get more positive and you can see that along here and so this should be flipped it in the x-axis so you just do have to be careful with this one because if you solve this equation there's not going to be any x x-axis. So when you're graphing sine and cos, the really good way to graph it is to work out what the x-intercepts are, and then it's easier to graph from there, but because there's no x-intercepts there, you just need to be careful if it's going to be in the positive like this, or is it going to be in the negative like that, especially when you have no x-intercepts. So what about if we're reflecting the y-axis now? So that means we're replacing x with negative x. So we're going to get the function y is equal to sine negative x. So what does this do? Well, this means that we are now flipping in the y axis. So that means this graph is going to go along here and up, as we can see that, because there and there, you can see the similarity in there and there. And then on the other side, it's going to look like this. So you may think, well, this is the same as reflecting in the x axis. So for the basic graph it does, 
However, it doesn't once you add some more translations, like such as dilations and reflection, uh, dilations and translations, as well as reflections. So it's really important that you distinguish between them. So obviously with the basic graph it is the same. However, if we look at this here, if we reflect in the x-axis, it's going to look like that. If we're reflecting the y-axis, so if we're reflecting the y, then it's going to look very different. It will look something like that instead. So it's still going to be positive. So it's really important that you recognize the difference there. So we see that, and then depending on what it looks like, then we can change it, see if the graph moved along, translated, and looks something like this. Then we just need to think, oh, okay, well, off oh, that, that was like cos, but if, if it came up and then down, then we need to think, okay, well, if it's reflected in the y-axis, what's it going to look like? Well, this is going to go here, so this point will be the same, and then it's going to curve up like it does there, and then come down, and across, and then down. However, what I find is the easiest way when you're dealing with questions like this is to work out what the x-intercepts are. So once you work out what the x-intercepts are, so you know that they're like, let's say, there, 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 then you're not quite sure, does it look like, does it come up like this? Or, because you know that looks like the sign, or does it go the other way and come down like that? So what you can do is you can think, well, in between these two values, there's going to be a maximum or a minimum. So you can sub that in, see whatever you have the equation is. So like, let's say y equals negative sine dot, 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 dot. So you sub it in, and then let's say this gives you y is equal to negative 2. Well, we know that negative 2 is therefore obviously going to be a negative number. We're going to have that value down here. Because we know that that's going to be the minimum, because it's in between the two x-intercepts, we know that they're inter x-intercepts. We know it's going to look like this. Then we know the graph will look like this. So often you don't explicitly have to look at the reflections in the x and the y-axis. As long as you can look at the x intercepts, work out where the maximum minimum is going to be. And once you work that out, you can work out the general shape, and then you know that the sign continues. So once you've got one period, you can continue that in both directions, and you can draw arrows to represent that it continues going on. However, often there'll be a domain restriction, so you would have just drawn some closed circles there, let's say there, and remember you always have to label the endpoints. So what about cos graphs? Well, the same thing applies with the cos graphs. If we reflect in the x-axis, that means we're replacing y with negative y. So we're going to get y is equal to negative cos x. So reflecting x, we're going to get that coming down and along like here. So, so you could have worked this out by working out the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts stay the same. Then you could think, well, what happens at x equals 0? So let's say we've worked out that, we've worked out that, that point that point, but we're not quite sure what the graph looks like. Well, when x equals 0, we can go y is equal to negative cos 0. Now, we know that cos 0 is equal to 1, so that gives us negative 1. So we know the point set. We know that's a, the minimum point, like a maximum point, but like a minimum point. And then in terms of uh, magnitude, it's a maximum point. Then we can we know the graph has to look like that, and then because it's a cos, it's going to continue in that fashion. So rather than looking at the reflections, it's often easier to work out the x-intercepts, sub in like one or two points, get familiar with what the graph will look like, make sure you know what the magnitude is, and then you can graph the equation from there. But make sure when you're subbing the points, you're subbing in either the x-intercepts, the minimum, or the maximums. So what about a reflection in the y-axis? So this is when we're replacing x with negative x. So we're going to get y is equal to neg cos negative x. So what's this going to look like on this equation? Well, if we're reflecting the y, we can see that well, it's actually symmetrical in the y-axis. So that means it's going to look like the exact same graph. But that's not always the case once again. So for this basic graph, this is the case. 
But what about if it was translated? So if it was translated, then you need to look in the y-axis. So you need to reflect it in there. So if the equation had shifted along and we had, let's say something that looks like that. And then we reflect it in the x. Well, you need to go to that point, and then it would come up, and then you'd repeat this along here. Then you'd repeat the other one uh, yeah, along there. But what you can do here is you don't have to draw the basic one and then draw it from there. I have to find that once again, work out the x-intercepts, work out where the maximum is, make sure you label what the y-axis is. So if you work out the maximum, you know what the y-axis is, you know that these are the intercepts, then you can just draw the graph in and just make sure when you're looking at the negative and you're solving the equations, you're solving the x-axis, um, the x-intercepts, that you look at this negative. So as long as you take account of the negative when you solve for the x-intercepts and you solve for the maximum and those different factors, then it will be relatively uh, straightforward to graph the equation without needing to uh, visually do it. And that can be often difficult when you have lots of different transformations.